One of the important things to consider when doing demonstrations is this card right here, the five Ps. Prior practice prevents poor presentations. Fred Jurgens, University of Wisconsin demonstrator. He would set up demos for people to do, <clears throat> and he would do them in class at the University of Wisconsin for many years. And he helped to author some of Bassam's early books on chemical demonstrations. What that means is practice it first. It's much easier to do it in the privacy of your own lab with another teacher present for safety considerations than try to get it optimized in front of your class and they're looking at you going, he doesn't know what he's doing, she doesn't know what she's doing, whatever. So what I've got here is a uh, demonstration, um, a catalyst demonstration. That's what I use it for. You can also use it for a redox reaction. You can use it for an exothermic reaction. You can use it in a number of different ways, as you can with many demonstrations, okay? But this one, I primarily use it to show what happens on the, sur on the surface of a catalyzed object. In this case, we're going to use a penny. What I've done was simply drilled a hole in a penny, like this, and took some copper wire from the lab and put it through there and twisted it so that it would stay around there. So you get a penny. I like to drill right above Lincoln's head, okay? Sometimes I put four marks in there because then I can have, of course, the famous, what is, was it Gettysburg Address? Four score? Okay, so um, anyhow, just a bad joke. I need to do that once in a while to get it out of my system. Then you want to optimize this. You want to put it over the surface of, a, of some acetone. This is some acetone. You don't need a lot of acetone. You can use a smaller amount than this but the penny should be hanging right over the surface. I have a 250 milliliter beaker. You could use a 50 milliliter beaker and a very small amount of acetone. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat the snot out of this penny. Get it red hot. This is one I'd be telling the kids, but we'd get it red hot with this torch here. We're gonna put it back over there so the vapors waft across there. And what you're gonna see will be interesting. Now, I, some of you are going, it's flammable acetone, what if it catches fire? Well, it could. I've never had that happen, and it could. If that does, that's what this beaker's for. You simply cover it. You don't, you know, go, oh my God, that fire's burning. No, calmly take this off, cover it. I, I don't think I'll have to do that, but, you know, if, if I'm perishing and on fire, then somebody cover it. Um, I'll try to recover myself. So we're going to, now, Try not to hold the copper when you're heating it, otherwise you'll learn that copper wire conducts heat well, but you know, I may have to do that briefly. Then I'm gonna put it over there, and then on the surface, well, I'll explain it when it's happening. So that, I'm gonna, see, I gotta light this puppy, right? There we go. Ooh, nice. Now, this, I was showing this idea probably 30 years ago. And I went home and I drilled a hole in a penny. And I'm using the same penny. By the way, you can't use new pennies because they're filled with zinc. I mean, you can, but if you heated a torch like this, that sucker will melt. There it is, that penny is pretty darn hot. You can see that? That's a red scent demo, I'll tell you that. I think we're about there, because I can't hold that wire much longer. <laughs> Now I'm going to put it over. Whoa, you don't want to grab the penny now unless that's your brand of humor. <laughs> okay, sorry. I think the vent has kicked in. Now let's get the lights down and we're gonna look at the penny. You can see on the monitors that it's still red, it's still glowing. What's happening on the surface? We have oxidized the copper. Formed copper oxide. The copper oxide is the catalyst. We had to make the catalyst first by oxidizing it in the air with the oxygen. Second of all, we had to get it up to the proper temperature. This won't work at room temperature. The penny has to be red hot to start with. So it needs a certain amount of activation energy. Another reason for doing this particular demonstration to show that it has to have activation energy. You can see it gets darker and red again, light and dark and red, back and forth. As the vapors waft across the surface, they cool it, 
but then they react, the acetone reacts, forming some ketones and some methane perhaps and some other oxidation products. So it's a little complicated reaction. But the point is, this is your catalyst. We need a certain activation energy, and it's occurring on the surface. The other point to notice is that this is a highly exothermic reaction. Otherwise, the catalyst wouldn't stay hot. It is staying hot because the reaction is giving off heat to keep the reaction going. This is very, very hot. If I took out a uh, piece of paper here and touched it to it, it would set that paper on fire. If I put it back in, it'll get hot again, okay? Now, if I take it out and I let it cool down, okay, and now I stick it back in, now it's still really hot, it may not, it may be, oh, no, nope, it still has enough energy, so it's above that threshold energy still, the reaction is gonna start again on the surface. But there's some point that if I take it out and let it cool down too much, the reaction will no longer take place. So, and this will go for a long period of time. It'll go for until the acetone runs out or it gets too far away from it. The vapors are not nice, so I would do this in the hood.